And I'm gonna need your real push. Yeah, there, there are a lot of Easter eggs coming up. Yeah, she's gonna be moving like this, <laughs> traveling. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to A Round of Gwent episode 4. So as always I am joined by co-host Pavel Borja. Hey guys. And today we have special guests Abby and Lorenzo who are going to be telling us a bit about the cards within Gwent, how they're created and how you go from static cards to the amazing premium cards which we see in the game. We're also going to be learning a bit about the evolution of the cards over Gwent's lifetime. So would you like to tell everybody at home uh, what your role is in the company? Uh, I work as an animator mm -hmm. on Gwent, and uh, my favorite faction is monsters. Nice! Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my favorite faction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Skoya, seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, yes. the best faction. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Lorenzo, and I'm an illustrator, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I love card games, so I'm very happy <laughs> to be part of the team. Yeah. I'm not the only one who loves card games here. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we play a lot. So you're That's responsible for the kind of static arts, and then you make them come to life. Is that yes. about right? That's right. I'm the first yeah. step. You are the, the third step, step maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a bit weird step. to think that way, but yeah, yeah. most likely that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a pipeline. You start with something, and then you. Well, yeah. Back. It's really cool. But if we go back, um, you remember we had Gwent as uh, addition to the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and then step by step we're kind of changing the art style, improving it. How did the process pretty much look? Because because like the versions in the Witcher 3. They didn't have the cool banners, they weren't as shiny, yeah. glossy, and they didn't have the new frames. And yeah. also you were not limited as to as many gold cards you can have in your deck. But then kind of we started developing them and making them a lot more different. And I think also like Nilfgaard was, was a big part as when the art style changed and improved. So could you maybe Lorenzo talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's funny because the the Gwen started as a, like some kind of improvement of the dice poker from yeah, the yeah. one and two. So I think uh, at the time we just wanted to uh, add this kind of feeling of okay, we, it's a mini game, but it has to feel the um, you had to feel this kind of old or cool game feeling. So all the cards they were looking like uh, more or less like tarot cards, I would say. So with very static <laughs> yeah, pose yeah. and uh, and that was cool and, and we really enjoyed that. But when we decided to go for a standalone thing, uh, a game, we were like we have to come up with something more dynamic like we're going to showcase a lot of characters so they just don't have to stand and also we had this idea of uh, making them premium so with the animation so of course you you can guess that the people are, are, are not going to stand like this oh, and like doing like oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah i think that's the the reason why we try to like you said yeah i mean just from an animation that. point of view if you see the old cards the characters are basically just standing mm -hmm. uh, as if they're you know a portrait and uh, that doesn't give much room for imagination in terms of animation on what you can do with the mm -hmm. characters. So all you could do is just make the character look around and that's not very interesting compared to the cards that you see now mm -hmm. where someone is killing someone or um, you know, uh, for example, Geralt is throwing Igni. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have more room for VFX and animation and ideas. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, and you were mentioning the evolution with Nilfgaard and I think yeah. that's um, because we had a lot of new illustrators coming, uh, working uh, for Gwent, because we needed a lot of cards actually, mm -hmm. and uh, we pretty much kind of run out of ideas of, uh, okay, so this character is standing with a sword, or, mm -hmm. okay, this guy is shooting with an arbalest, and uh, at some point we just had to come up with uh, like new compositions, new colors, and the cool thing is that we have kind of a lot of space in each card to, to, to use our ideas. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, we had just a small frame. I mean, the whole card is uh, is visible in the battlefield, which is mm -hmm. really cool for us. Mm -hmm. I personally really enjoy the kind of parallax effect where you're able to move the card around and see yeah. kind of around the corner. It really like Peek around the corner. Yeah, it lends itself to like the immersion of the but cards. But this uh, has a cool story actually because uh, when we were thinking about making premium cards, mm -hmm. uh, our art director Kasia Redeshu, she was really looking for something different mm -hmm. to, uh, to for the premium cards, and uh, yeah. she came out at the studio with this uh, picture of, uh, <laughs> of a cat. <laughs> I love this story, and uh, it was like what story very, is this? It was a gif of a cat, like very psychedelic, psychedelic oh, with okay. like cool effects. colors moving back and forth, and it was like oh, right. it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think she showed it to Adam Badowski, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the premium version. That's the premium. <laughs> Version. It has mm -hmm. to look like this. 
I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, still, there were a lot of work, and uh, I think the first uh, premium cards was an Aracas. Okay. It was looking yeah. very, yeah. very cool. I remember when you tilted the, the card, you could see that there was a little mouse in the corner. It was yeah. like, yeah, it was like what you said, adding yeah, a little yeah. bit of backstory to it, mm -hmm. like adding a little mm -hmm. bit more to the card. Yeah. yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about the process of creating all of these wonderful premium cards that we have in Gwent? So you'll obviously start with some kind of idea yeah. um, based in the lore, I guess, and they come up with yeah. versions. So usually the, the writers of the game, they come up with a pitch that mm -hmm. we read and we try to, uh, to respect that pitch. But when we come up with new ideas, of course, there is no issues. So this is how it starts. Mm -hmm. We uh, provide three sketches and then we just gather all the, illustrator the illustrators, we just gather and we choose one of those three sketches and uh, once it's done we just work and to, to, to achieve the illustration uh -huh. and then we pass to these, those dudes yeah. <laughs> to do the hard yes. work. So once the illustration is done we pass it to the modeling department who then creates the model of the illustration and then we work on the animation. Mm -hmm. So uh, depending on the illustration if the character is from the game then we look at the Witcher games and mm -hmm. see if the character has any specific movements, mm -hmm. what was the role in the game and then we implement that on the cards. But if the character is not from the game, we have to do some background research, similar to a detective, you know. What's his story? <laughs> and uh, if he's a good guy or a bad guy, uh, what are its characteristics? And once all of that research is done, we see the illustration and try to understand what was the, what is the story that is being told in the illustration. Mm -hmm. And if we can uh, justify the art with the animation and VFX on top of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, one example is of uh, uh, one of the crones, uh, Vispis, and she has some twitching going on. So that was in the game. So we added that in the card as well to yeah. say to stay true to the character. So mm -hmm. she's just not another creepy old lady. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the best part, right? <laughs> Sometimes I, I see, uh, when I'm working uh, around the studio, I see you acting kind of yes, weird. We <laughs> I recognize the cards. Yeah, and so the like. Uh, uh, as animators, we have different approaches that we take towards animating the cards. So some of our animators actually act it out. Mm -hmm. So if they're working on a character, they are going to record themselves and uh, just repeat the movements and they actually get into the mood of the character. So it looks quite funny, uh, you know, especially when they're shooting outside mm -hmm. because inside people know what they're doing. But outside, you know, when you're walking around, you're taking a stroll and there's this guy who's just being a weird so person running around. Creepy dude outside. <laughs> yeah, oh, you, you know, do that. that can go terribly wrong in so many yeah. ways, you know. Some person just looking at the guy and calling the cops, you know, there's this weird person doing <laughs> something. And then next mm -hmm. day, you know, one of the animators missing <laughs> uh, but luckily that didn't happen mm -hmm. and uh, I personally uh, listen to music when I'm working not that kind of music no, that was terrible. yeah <laughs> but uh, for example uh, when I worked on Heim it the illustration was so creepy uh, to come up with ideas I was listening to the soundtrack from the conjuring because it's just so depressing in a good way <laughs> <laughs> actually, it actually way. set my mood and you can actually visualize what's going on mm -hmm. so yeah, it helps a lot. And you can take references online as well. Yeah. So there are lots of ways that the animating team get into the zone. Yes, Some you people... have to go into that zone yeah. <laughs> and not get out of it until the animation is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've obviously got some hidden acting talents within yes, the team here as well. Yeah. Oscar winning performances. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's also for the static illustrations. Like, for example, if you want to show a pose, you most likely need someone to sit down and take a photo. Oh, yeah, we do that a lot. Basically, um, most of the pictures I have on my phone is like pictures of my own hands. <laughs> 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 Because <laughs> you know, right, like the hands are the most Aww. tricky part of the mm -hmm. human anatomy to draw. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we do that a lot. Also, we, like you said, uh, we, we're just taking the pose for... Yeah, uh, like so, basically, we have uh, lots of plastic swords uh, at the studio <laughs> that we use. They look kind of ridiculous because they're made of, they're made of from foam. Like foam, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I saw those. I was like, well, why do they need those? It's we like, need do those. they fight in between? Or? <laughs> I mean, I wish we had the proper ex equipment like, like you do. Where's yeah, your sword, by the way? It actually fell down. Here it is. Take rest. care of your sword, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's what that's what we do because we really need to to be uh, as realistic as possible. Yeah. And uh, in that case, you really don't do that without a proper reference. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 So I think everyone really appreciates the art within the game. It's one of the kind of main selling points of Gwent is the beautiful art which you guys create and how immersive the cards are, cards are, and the attention to detail, uh, as well as the little you know Easter eggs which come along with some of the cards as well. You have to be patient to find. Yeah. Those, those yeah. 
yeah, there's yeah, a lot of Easter eggs coming up. Yeah. yeah. The, the one I like is the one with Regis, which is one of the cards that you enjoy, right? Yeah, I love Regis. He's but like don't tell anybody what's happening after, what, five minutes? Five minutes, minutes yeah. You have to watch the card for five, five minutes, minutes and then you and then yeah. you okay. will see what happens. Yeah. You it's really just, gotta be it's, patient. It's a little awesome. detail, mm -hmm. but I, I think players, not not most of them actually caught that uh, yeah. Easter egg. So it's like actually awesome. one of the good yeah. ones. So could you tell us a bit about maybe like what your favorite card is, your favorite premium card in the game? Uh, my favorite premium card is Vilgefotz. Mm -hmm. I saw that card and he's just absolutely destroying that person with fire and that he's... That person. <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's that person? I don't know. Well, after his face is burned, we probably never know mm -hmm. who that person was anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, he looks so menacing and he's like enjoying mm. what he's doing and I yeah, absolutely love that. Yeah, he's grinning, like, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah it's like, he t t that card turns me evil. It's like, you know, if I get that power, I'd totally do that yeah. as well. Oh. I wonder who acted that one out. You have to watch out for them. Yes, I'll totally do that. <laughs> Sometimes we really look forward for the animation. Like when Nemanja was illustrating this uh, this card, mm -hmm. we're like, oh, okay, so that can be out of control. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and, it and it did. Yeah. yeah. So what's your favorite premium card? Oh, my favorite card, card has, has also the best name. It's Asire Bar Anahid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's the lady with the person. cat portal. Mm -hmm. I think it's a crazy idea and, and I portal. love it. <laughs> like cat the portal. VFX guys that just came up with the, this uh, kind of different atmosphere, color atmosphere at some mm -hmm. point. And I think it's, uh, it's really well done. Yeah. And also, it's very psychedelic. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you were say, mentioning that you love to listen to creepy songs. Oh, yes. I love got to, to listen to yeah. psychedelic <laughs> rock music. <laughs> I yeah. think it fits. It uh -huh. fits into the whole illustrator mm -hmm. persona. Um, talking about new things, we also have um, three cards, three new premiums that we want to yes. showcase. Yes, we've got a bit of a reveal today. Yes. Is it a leak? It is a leak. <laughs> oh. You know, I love leaks. Um, <laughs> so we have a new version of Geralt. Mm -hmm. er er Erden. Yeah. Would you like and to tell us yeah. maybe a, a bit about Erden and, and how it was created or who created it? So, so yeah, I think uh, this card uh, was made of, uh, by uh, Anna Podetborna mm -hmm. and uh, the cool thing is, is that it showcases a noon wraith in the background yeah. and it fits uh, perfectly the, the, the quest actually in the game yeah, where the it's the f first time that it really gets important mm -hmm. and you can like, uh, that's the only way to fight a noon wraith, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. It, the sign is very fitting. So so we've got, what have we got so far? We've got Quen, we've got Ard, Eren now. Igni. Yeah. Yeah. Igni, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So Axi no. maybe on the horizon. Yeah. I no, hope the next, no, no. the next one will be Geralt Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I like that idea. That should be a code. Yeah, Geralt in Yennefer's clothes. <laughs> in the party in, in yeah, yeah. that'll mm -hmm. be perfect. Okay, so we we said we have uh, the new Geralt, but we also have a new Siri as well. Yes. This is version three of Siri. Ooh, this one was hard to create. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's, what's up with the hands like? Yeah. What's that? Tell well, me more. Guess Tell me what? More. Guess what's happening? <laughs> she's traveling between the worlds. Whoa, <laughs> so okay. That was the idea, and because she's not doing it uh, in the game, uh, that was kind of hard to come up with an idea mm -hmm. of, okay, what does it look like? So what I wanted to showcase is like uh, part of her body are in different dimensions. Mm -hmm. So basically you can see that she doesn't have like four different arms of course. It's just <laughs> that they are yeah, yeah. kind of warping around her. Mm -hmm. It also gives this kind of a uh, clockwork feeling. That, uh, so I was very uh, so, um, like curious to see what the animators and the VFX we'll artists were yeah. going to do with this one because I was like it's, I don't even uh, really <laughs> understand what's going on here, yeah. but they will figure out. <laughs> so how did you find tackling this problem of making traveling between different dimensions translate to 2D? The concept was so so tricky that, you know, how do you so show that in animation? Because uh, it's not a 3D model, so you can't rotate Siri around, you can't like put her wherever you want. Uh, but we took reference from the fight in Kaer Morhen, mm -hmm. where Siri loses all her, you know, control, and she's like screaming, and you know, the, all the energy around her, around her, and the card looked very similar. Mm -hmm. So we thought, okay, let's try that. So we have an intro for the card where she screams, and you know, everything, the energy, you know, everything is just going up, and she's screaming. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we thought we can do with the hand instead of animating the hand separately uh, behind her. Uh, to not make it look like it's a different hand, we thought it's just going to follow the same path of her original hand. It's just that it's going to jitter so that it looks mm -hmm. like she's, you know, losing the mm -hmm. control of her powers and she's kind of teleporting, but yeah. not teleporting like and glitching. glitching. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Glitching cool. like Roach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, then the VFX guys added on top of that and they made the energy look so intense that you know I think it'll be very clear what's going on it yeah. won't be as confusing yeah, yeah you yeah. guys did a very good job thank it you for that <laughs> that was not an easy yeah. one yeah. I don't think it was an easy concept for anyone you know mm, definitely how, how do you traveling through that? space and time yeah. is yes, quite it's, hard it's so to put in cardboard it's, it's difficult to get well Lorenz had in his mind he's <laughs> listening to psychedelic rock and yeah. going like yeah she's gonna be moving like this traveling it's gonna be <laughs> and then the guys were like, I don't see it. Oh, wait, okay. But I think you start to understand me. That's yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See? Yeah, I really like the consistency through uh, lots of cards which have a similar kind of experience. So we have uh, this version of Siri and also Pavetta and Ithwin, who are all kind of, I think they're known as sources and they're yes. like mm, channeling right. their powers. Channeling right. powers. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty impressive. That's really, really cool. Talking about impressive things, the third card that we have is Uma, Ooh. the most requested card by the community. Well, like my favorite character, the just because it's, it's cute it's and adorable. creepy at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she's just jumping up and down, trying to catch a butterfly. <laughs> Does he catch it at some point? No, come on, he's not cruel. No, maybe no, there's he's, a, he doesn't catch. No, it. I don't think he's like cruel. Catch to it animals. And he's <laughs> <laughs> That would be cool. <laughs> Did you do that, guys? No. Uh, mm. No, but the animator who worked on it actually recorded himself. And Skipping outside? <laughs> yes, he was outside the studio recording himself, you know, twisting his legs like Uma with his hands, even the facial expression and the neck. Wow. And he was just running around and uh, we watched it, we were like, what is he doing? <laughs> And uh, yeah, but he did it so well, you know, he, if you see Uma and his performance, it's like, you wouldn't know which is the real one. It's it, true, it was, I've seen the video and yeah. I can tell. <laughs> it's, it's an Oscar winning performance and that, yeah. you know, everyone needs to see that. I think we need to see that video. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think definitely need mm -hmm. to see that. It's also a lot of hidden acting talents within the, the art department them, yeah, here. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it gets a bit dangerous, you know, because they're getting the characters so much, mm -hmm. we sometimes need to get a psychiatrist. To get them out, yeah. Yeah, it's so, like, you know, you're not this person. And uh -huh. then they have like, you know, multiple personalities disorder because they've worked on so many cards. Wow, yeah. be an animator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be fun, they said. <laughs> it'll be safe, they said. No. So it was really interesting learning a bit about some of these brand new cards which are coming, but now we're going to take some time to look at some of the pre-existing cards and delve into the lore a little bit more. So Adalbert has been cooking up something for the past few weeks and he's very excited to share it with you. Greetings! You play! You play, you play, you play. Perhaps lamely so, perhaps exceedingly well. But you put in hours, and so you think you know all there is to know about the cards. But you do not know what lies beyond them. So I am here to tell you, to tell you what lies beyond the frame. To start, three women, all formidable. I knew them all, did what they commanded. The first, Yutta Andimu. A sword maiden unparalleled. Since childhood, vowed before the goddess Freya, she would only wed the man who would defeat her in a duel. Many brave lads of Faroe Isle attempted as much and failed, miserably so. Who do we see here? Yes, Yuta sat upon her Tokus, defeated, and whose shadow looms over her. Two sword hilts erect over his shoulder. That's right, which a Geralt of Rivia wed. They did not. But other things. <laughs> the second, Kaira Metz. An eccentric, a hater of the filthy outdoors, a maker of aphrodisiacs, a user of aphrodisiacs, a pusher of aphrodisiacs. But upon the card, we see Keira emitting a kinetic blast. Twas at the Battle of Kaer Morin, in the age when the wild had descended upon the earth, a battle that swayed the world's fate, and that which Keira found her mate and partner in The Witcher, Lambert. And though we do not see Lambert on Kaira's card, we do see Kaira upon Lambert's card, flailing her arms about and sending elves flying. Alas, I was caught in one of her blasts. Yes, I was there too. Elsewise, I could not have brought you this tale. And last, the third of our formidable females who, alas, ended chained to a rock. Bernabran, for of her I speak, widow 
of King Bran of Clan Tuirsech, mother of his firstborn son, Svanrig. She had the will to power and did what was required, perpetrating a great massacre at a feast. But I ask you, what else did those gluttons deserve? And so I ventured down to the coast to witness and document her noble suffering, her slow but admirable waning whipped by winds and water. Alas, a gust tore the scroll from my hand, which slapped her across the face, rendering her suffering a trifle, a fact I much regret. There you have them, Gwenters, one and all, three formidable females. Join me next time for more words. Yeah, I think she deserved it, right? The slap on her face yeah. <laughs> with the newspaper. It's yeah, just it a was, paper. It was, it was it was harsh, but yeah, like actually getting to know the story behind the cards is really really cool. Because mm -hmm. some of the things that he mentioned, like uh, Yuta, for example, I didn't know it was Geralt's shadow. No, I, I, I didn't look at the cards so much to actually True. notice that. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get the background story and kind of you know, all, like you guys said, the cards themselves they already have a story. But to learn more and more is really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. And I've seen that Lambert card so much, but I never really. Kira was in the background. Yeah, in the background. Yeah, and the two cards it's like relate. Like the same scene but yeah. in a different angle. Yeah, it's it's cool. Like, That's like a like a like a you know 360, mm -hmm. 360 VR yeah. dimension. Because yeah. we're used it. to the kind of uh, trio card, so like the shield maidens or something. But this gives you a kind of yeah like a 360 yeah, view it's of like the situation. Rotated. Oh yeah, and let me tell you that it's a nightmare for the animators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the illustrations are usually like so good all the time that you know you know what's happening in the in the card, so it's mm -hmm. it's actually not. Not that difficult. It's only the concept that gets tricky sometimes, like with uh, Siri. Yeah. But most of the time, it's like we know what's happening. Yeah, and we know the cool. Goal. So we can even go more complicated next time. Yeah. No, I should have <laughs> said go that. Crazy. Yeah, I can take that back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. So now we're going to move on to the next segment of the show, which is one of our favorites, and this is the community corner. Community corner. All right, guys, welcome to the Community Corner. Uh, what I have for you today is actually a piece with me here. Look at that. Um, and I'm going to need your help, Ash, <laughs> to this unfold is this beauty. Redania, Mahaka Mountains. Yeah, here we go. Here, it's a, it's a map of the Witcher world, and it's really, really cool, handmade. And uh, it's actually used in the Witcher school. So they use wow. this map to kind yeah. of portrait. Here. It's really yeah, nice. nice little details. Um, you have like Tucson, um, there's Tamaria, Redania, all of them. All yeah, of them. they've even got the smaller places, like they've got Vengerberg, Rivia. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Oh, that's where Yennefer is from. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, nice. I really like this one. Yeah, it's by yeah. Katarzyna Hummelt. And yeah, she made this and there's like, like a good job. Yeah. Someone died to make this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, oh has, no. it has a bloody hand here. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Nothing good for sure. Let's fold this away. Do, 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 do. Moving on. I'll just put this here. Moving on. We also have an awesome shield. Uh, yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. Uh, by Alejandro Anzolega. And uh, he's known also as Mahakam Workshop on, on Facebook. And yeah. Our shoes are our ramparts, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I love this. It's like a full-sized shield made in shield. Yeah, it's it looks, incredible. looks totally like in the illustration. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Really, really good. I think you would need one to protect yourself. Yeah, you have the sword, I, I, but you don't I have, have the, the sword, but I don't have the shield. <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah, you you're sort of a berserk and... Yeah, just... So, who's a uh, shield maiden cosplay confirmed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's the week of today. Tell me, yeah. yeah I, could, I could, maybe maybe next episode. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, it's Ibedia Mademoiselle. That's the author. Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. And uh, it's a it's a Temerian uh, soldier, and it's really really cool because it's a it's a different twist to yeah. the character, and I really like the art style because mm. it could like totally be, be a Gwent card. Yeah, it so. looks like it's come you know, straight from the studio and should yeah. be part of the, really the card good. collection. Yeah. Awesome work. 
also, we have two cosplays that we have which was with us at BGS, uh, some Brazil game show. Yeah, we know them pretty, pretty yeah, well. Yeah, so Shermi and Nadia, Shermi cosplay and Nadia Sanikal, and they uh, were shot by Bruno Antonucci Fotografia. Speaking of <laughs> shooting, they were a catapult at the show, right? Yeah. Yes. We were just a, shooting there some. There was a life-sized uh, trebuchet or catapult yeah, at the yeah. at Brazil game show. Yeah, we're catapulting t-shirts. Oh, just t-shirts? Yeah. No boulders? No, 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 no. It was, <laughs> it was, it was safe. Everybody <laughs> was safe. No one got hurt. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, I encourage you to send us your memes. So uh, if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter, in the comment section you can add your own meme. And the meme we have today is the North Guardian Knight who is praising the sun. Like. And it's like step by step, step by step. Mm -hmm. It's very, very cool. Nice. Do you praise the sun every day? Of course. Se morning? Several times a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so yeah, cold, yeah. you have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially it's kind of cold yeah. nowadays, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially when there's winter time and it's cold. You yeah. have to praise the sun. And as always, I want I want you to send your plays of the month. So you have to go to playblend.com slash P O T M. And yeah. Yeah. So what was that? So that was fantastic. It was really nice to see all of the uh, creations in the community corner, in particular the like physical props which people are making. Yeah, Maybe we are, could get a few sent and decorate the place around here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the end of the show. I really hope you enjoyed learning some stuff from our guests this week, learning about the cards within Gwent. It's been really interesting hearing the behind the scenes, especially what the, the artists get up to here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been very and, informative. And what the animators have to it's do. Not a oh, secret yeah. anymore. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see some of that footage you know, soon. <laughs> oh yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Soon TM. Yeah. We have a lot to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so wonderful. Thank you so much for watching the show today. Really hope you enjoyed it, learned something new, and we will see you on the next one very shortly. Mm -hmm.